What makes UPP Gone unique is it actually creates a nice environment to uh, collaborate, to, to talk. They facilitate that people get together for networking. They don't just do presentations and that's it, but also arrange things outside the presentations. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everyone. And uh, based on this uh, title, you can see that my talk is about points. And points as in 4.2. So it's a simple uh, punctuation mark, but it is used a lot in uh, uh, C++ syntax. So idea is to play a little game and uh, try to test ourselves, can we name all the use cases for uh, points in C++. We have four rounds. The first round is about a single point or dot. There are three to four use cases depending on how you group them, and I'll give you five seconds to think first. Now let's see the answers. Obviously, it's uh, in floating point literals. We just saw that. The second case is a member access operator. So I have two slightly different subcases there. One is member of object and pointer to member of object because of this star, it's slightly different. But we are missing one more. And I think that many of you will have trouble figuring that out. It's relatively new and it's in module names. Module names can have point in them. Next round is the most difficult one. We have 10 to 12 two-point usages that's otherwise known as columns. So I'll give you 10 seconds starting now. Now let's see the answers. We will start from the more obvious ones. So we have class inheritance, member access specifiers, member initializer list, labels, notice the weird example, it's a valid code, but don't forget uh, also go to labels, ternary operator, range four, enum underlying type, and now it becomes a bit more difficult. Did anyone remember bit fields? That's an old thing, but very often forgotten. But we have two more relatively recent additions. One is attribute specifier, where we can group the common uh, attribute namespace. And also in modules, again, we have private fragment and partitions. In this round, we have a bonus answer, which is uh, assembly declaration. It's not part of the standard, but GCC syntax is very often used. Uh, the second, the third round is three points or ellipses, and again, you have five seconds. Now I'll start from a little less obvious answer. That's variadric functions, not templates, but functions. And I bet there are a lot of young people here in audience who maybe don't even know this exists. It's very rarely used in C++, but at the bottom of the slide, you can see uh, one of the uh, things you, it, it is still used for in template metaprogramming. Other answers are kind of more obvious, variadic templates, parameter pack, pack expansion, a lot of contexts in which we can use parameter uh, uh, pack expansion, but I consider that to be the single use case. Size of uh, ellipsis operator, catch all for uh, exceptions. And one more, also very often forgotten, and that's variadric macro. And the last round, uh, four points or a double column, uh, I think five seconds are enough. So the most obvious one, scope resolution, qualified names, and I will not provide any example for that because there are a lot of examples with namespaces and everything. A slightly special case is a pointer to member, again, because of this star, I consider that to be a slightly separate case. And we have uh, nested namespace definition, and again, attributes, although we kind of mentioned that in round two. And this round also has a bonus answer. If we look at CPP, uh, uh, CPP 26, we will notice something interesting, splicers in reflections proposal. 
I'll end on that note. Thank you.